what is parity violation in physics? And maybe I should add the caveat here that our listeners, I think, are in general very smart, very curious, but the majority are not trained physicists, if that colors how you'll respond. Right. And parity is, it's a rather esoteric concept, but it's the idea that the laws of physics or most of the laws of physics look identical if you look at the behavior in a mirror. So if you do a mirror reversal of of the of what's happening, you it looks just the same. Okay. And so almost all the the behavior we see in, in fundamental physics look that have that characteristic. But it turns out there's some very exotic processes involving the weak interactions that some time ago people discovered gee unlike all the electromagnetic interactions and nuclear interactions that we see that sort of determine the world around us these weak interactions violate parity in that you do do a mere reversal of the experiment you get a different result and so this this happened oh late 50s i guess that they discovered this idea but our my work involved uh testing the ideas about unifying fu fundamental forces in physics and so there's the de so-called development of the standard model of of physics which was a big accomplishment in the 60s and 70s uh, where they realized that these two different forces that people thought were quite separate and distinct, the weak force involving neutrinos and so on, and then the electromagnetic force involving charged particles like electrons and protons, people have been thinking these were just two separate things. And then the standard model came along, Weinberg, Salam, and Glashow, they got a Nobel Prize for showing how these are actually different manifestations of the same underlying so-called electroweak force. And so in our so people were trying to test this at giant accelerator experiments at high energies and so on. And my experiment was testing that theory in a completely different way on a tabletop experiment by looking in atoms and seeing if there was a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of parity violation in the way atoms worked in the show and sort of showing this electroweak parity violating force was actually showing up in atoms. And it it's a ridiculously tiny effect, but we did lots of fancy, complicated experiments with lasers to be able to get sensitive enough to actually see it and measure that yes it was there and and it the, the predictions of the standard model work here there and so it was a good uh, just another good test of that fundamental theory mm. just to expand a bit on this notion of parity and parity violation i came across as i was reading about this a very nice example of making this macroscopic to perhaps better appeal to our listeners intuitions and you can tell me if i if i have it right but we can imagine a a, a typical clock we can also imagine the mirror image of this clock that is constructed uh, exactly the opposite of our clock and instead of the hands running clockwise if it is if it is constructed the exact same way, but opposite, the hands should run counterclockwise. But what we would observe in a pair, in the case of parity violation is even though it's constructed the same exact way, the hands go clockwise on our uh, macroscopic reverse clock. And obviously things it, it's, it's not, this wouldn't happen because it's macroscopic, but it gets the intuition across that something very unexpected is happening based on the physical makeup and everything we think we know about physics. Yeah. And so that's a reasonable analogy, except 
that's a really extreme example. And it, and to be more corresponding to the physics, it would be that the clock runs just a slightly different rate. It, it, you know, when the new clock that you build, it actually goes the other direction, but it doesn't move at quite the same speed as it did in the first direction would be sort of more. Right. I, I think that having it run, uh, having it still run clockwise just makes more salient the, the idea. Just, of yeah, I'm just saying it's just a little more extreme than what we ever <laughs> yeah. get around to seeing in physics. And I mean, I, another, another analogy to use is just to, to think that and this is actually a correct description, which is that in the atom, in the electrons have a tiny screw sense to them. So they're like a right-handed screw. And so, you know, a, a, a screw looks, you do a mere reflection of it. It's different. It's right-handed to left-handed. And so that's sort of the distinction we see there. 